Welcome back to another episode of This Week on Channel 9. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Developer Advocate. So this week, a lot of the tech news centered around the annual CES trade show in Las Vegas. And although most of that stuff was related to gadgets, there were some cool dev vids that I'll be talking about a little bit later. But first, let's get into this week's latest dev news. So first, a reminder that Microsoft Ignite, the tour, is running now. And the Toronto event is finishing up as I record this. And next week, we've got Singapore. Also, this month, we'll be in Tel Aviv. And I'll be at this stop. So if you are there and you see me, please say hello. We'll also be in Johannesburg and Milan. More details about Microsoft Ignite, the tour, including all the cities we'll be in this year, and links to register are in the show notes and description down below. And since we are talking about events, let's go ahead and discuss CES. So like I said, CES isn't really a developer show per se. It's about hardware, gadgets, TVs, cars, and weird robots. But a lot of those products and services on display use stuff like IoT, artificial intelligence, and mixed reality. And so over on the Internet of Things blog, Sam George, director of Azure Internet of Things, breaks down some of the stuff on display that use various Microsoft technologies. And I'm including this because I know for me, I find it inspiring to see real world ways people um, and companies are using using the most cutting edge technologies. There was also a bunch of new Windows PCs and other devices on display at CES. And I've linked to uh, both Sam's blog post and a blog post on the Windows site uh, with a roundup of the consumer hardware stuff in the show notes and the description down below. Moving on to some really great GitHub news. GitHub announced this week that unlimited free private repos are now available for all users. And there's also now a unified enterprise offering. And so if you're not familiar with how GitHub works, how it's always worked in the past is that you can have as many repos as you want on a free account. But the caveat is that a repo needs to be public. Now, this makes sense for a lot of projects, and forking and cloning are part of what make GitHub such a great community. But sometimes it's not always ideal. Like maybe you're working on something for school, or it's a side project you're not really ready to make public. And so having a private repo can be a great way to go. But in the past, if you wanted a private repository, you needed to pay. But now, unlimited private repos are available to all users, and you can also have up to three collaborators per repository. Now, if you want to access certain build tools or you want to increase the number of contributors um, to a private repo, you can still upgrade to a GitHub Pro or GitHub Team account. But honestly, like this, this news just totally made my week, so great job, GitHub. And speaking of GitHub, the awesome GitHub pull request extension for VS Code is now even better. And so this came out a couple of months ago, but over the last few months, the team has been adding um, even more features, like the ability to create pull requests, leave suggested edits as a comment, and also view status checks for each pull request, all inside the editor without having to leave your code. So I love it. Back at Connect last month, the team unveiled the public preview of the built-in Python images for Azure App Service on Linux, something that users have been asking for for a really long time. And this week, Python 2.7 support was added to that preview. And so this means that you can now use Python 2.7, 3.6, or 3.7 in Azure App Service on Linux to build and support your projects. Links to the announcement, as well as an overview of Python on Azure App Service, are in the show notes and the description. Over on Medium, Scott Hunter has a fantastic post um, uh, up about starting the .NET open source revolution. And I really love Scott's post because he really gives context to just how much perceptions and internal biases around open source have changed at Microsoft over the last 11 or 12 years. And I really love Scott's success story and I'm so appreciative of how he helped pave the way for the way the company works now. And like I've said this before, but if you'd asked me back in 2007 or 2008 or, or even in 2012, if I'd be working at Microsoft right now, I honestly probably would have laughed. But thanks to people like Scott and to the broader community, I do work here. And I feel really good that I'm at a place that is genuinely committed to open source. So links to Scott's blog post are in the show notes and description. And speaking of Medium, there are a few great posts on the Azure Medium page, including how to deploy externally generated R models to Azure Mas Machine Learning Studio web services, as well as a rundown of five Microsoft Learn modules for getting started with Azure. And links to both of those are in the show notes and the description down below. Over on Channel 9 this week, Olivier gives an overview of the Azure IoT Microsoft Professional Program on the Internet of Things show. And over on the Xamarin show, James shows off his essential API of the week, connectivity. 
And over on Azure Friday, Scott Hanselman, everybody's favorite developer, interviews some interns from the Microsoft Explorer program, and they talk about their experiences working with the Azure Container Registry. And over on DevOps interviews, Donovan Brown interviews Azure DevOps Group Program Manager, Aaron Bjork, about agile planning. So check out all those videos. The links are in the show notes in description. And now it's time for my pick of the week. So like, I love retro computing and retro gaming, as you can see. And um, over at Kotaku, Chris Kohler wrote a really fantastic retrospective on the computer fairs that he used to visit in the 1990s to shop for both computer hardware and share our games and apps. And I'm going to be honest, I kind of miss the computer fair moment. I started actively using computers when the World Wide Web was starting to take off. But I did used to go to flea markets on the weekends in the late 1990s and the early 2000s. And I would like search through boxes of parts, hoping to find cheap RAM or a hard drive or a boxed copy of some software. And um, anyway, this was a really nice look back at how the indie developer ecosystem used to work back in days before ubiquitous high-speed internet access. Links to everything we discussed are in the show notes and description. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button on YouTube. And also while you're there, hit the subscribe button so, uh, for Microsoft developers so that you can keep up with all the latest Channel 9 goodness. Share your favorite computer fair-esque memories in the comments, even if it's just something like I browse shareware forums using IE 3.0, because I did that. See you next week.